Hi, it's Jess with Jess Makes Sense. Today I have a Stony Clover dupe video for you. All of the items are from Hobby Lobby and they look exactly like the Stony Clover pouches. So let me go ahead and get started. I'll show you the pouches, um, how much they cost and what I did with them. And then at the very end, I uh, videoed myself putting some of the stuff together. So I will show you like what glue I used, all of that stuff. So that'll be at the end, just in case somebody already knows how to do it. They just want to see the products, but let me go ahead and get started with just a plain one that I haven't done. Um, this looks exactly like the Sony Clover pouch. That's $58. This one is $7.99. I will leave the SKU number, um, at the, uh, in the description box. Sometimes Hobby Lobby website is a little finicky, so put in the SKU number and this exact thing will pop up and then from there you can pick the colors. For this, I believe in all the versions, it comes in a black, a white, a pink, uh, this like purpley blue color, and a mint, if I'm not mistaken. I think I wrote that in my notes. Yes, black, white, pink, minty, this bluish purplish. So um, this one was $7.99 and then he, from here, this is just like a plain one. You could absolutely use it plain by the way, but Hobby Lobby came out with a bunch of patches which are very similar to the Stony Clover. You can also get them on Amazon. This is the one I made for my mother-in-law. Um, this has an S because that is her first name starts with an S and it's the chenille patch. This patch I want to say is three inches if I'm not mistaken. Um, they have smaller ones too, but I just like the bigger ones because it takes up almost this whole area. I just thought that was so cute. I hope I did it right because it's not looking like the right side of the S. Anyway, and then this I added, this is just the leather rope that I use that I use for keychains. And I just added this little tidbit at the end of there. You don't have to do that, but it's just a way to show you how customizable this is. Um, they are, this is the mint square patch. I just guessed mint 5.1 inches by 5.1 inches by 1.4 inches. And so I think this is the perfect little gift, such a cute gift for a girl's birthday, for party favors, for bridesmaids, for Mother's Day, like it is just the go-to thing that anybody can use this pouch for literally anything. Medicine, feminine products, lipsticks, makeup, candy, I mean like little, any kind of toiletries, it's the perfect little bag. So I highly recommend this, especially if you are doing something soon, like a bridesmaid's party or like a little kid's party. I think this is so adorable. The next one is probably my favorite because I'm a Disney fan and yes, Hobby Lobby has Disney patches. Uh, one of them is, let me show you. This is what I made. And again, I just put paper in there because I'm pressing this down with what I glued it, how I glued it. But this is Minnie Mouse ears and this one's the clear zipper. This one's $6.99 and it opens up. And I just added this little white wood bead and this little circle for the keychains. It's easier to open. Um, it does have a big zipper, so I just add this, added this because it's easier to open, but the zipper's perfect, so you don't have to add anything to these. Um, this one is the black round pouch with clear top. It's 4.3 inches by 4.3 inches by 2 inches. Also perfect, perfect for medicine, even cute if you have a baby and you have pacifiers, any kind of little tiny thing that you could just, you can get a hook and clip this to the outside of the backpack. So adorable. I feel like if this was sold, well, Stony Clover sells these type of things, but if this was sold like at a Disney store, it would be like $60. But this all together, because this was seven and this is a two pack, $549. So seven fifty, like less than ten dollars for this whole thing. I think that's so cute. This did also come with this patch, so it was a two pack patch, and it was only five forty nine. Total win. Um, this one, the SKU numbers right there, and I'll add the SKU numbers to the patches too. A lot of these items are new, and Hobby Lobby doesn't carry a lot of things like at the store. Um, so you can order them online or you can go in, uh, they even do rain checks for you. So it's totally up to you because these things are selling like hotcakes. Uh, I saw them on TikTok and I was like, oh man, these things are going to go and they fly off the shelf. So 
grab it while you can. Uh, the next one is this Yeehaw patch. I don't know what I'm using this for yet, but I'm going to use it for something. It's only at $2. Can you believe that? And it's the chenille patch. They had a bunch of different options. They had Stitch, Winnie the Pooh, quite a few different things. The other one that I did, and this one's a bigger one. This one's $10. Um, this was $1.99, the Glam Patch, and I think this three-pack of daisies, uh, I think it was $3.49, um, and it is mint rectangle pouch, 8 by 4 inches uh, by 1.7 inches by 4.7 inches, and this is, like, pretty large. Like, you could use this for a full-on makeup bag. Um, on the inside, when I'm doing these, when I'm gluing these, I do put something, try to put something stable and then fill it because you just need to do that so it doesn't get messed up. This one I used a coaster. So if you have this one and you guys have any kind of coasters at home, it was like the perfect fit to get it to be like kind of hard on one side so you can press it in better. So that is all of the patches, I believe. And I'll... Um, I'll see if I can link any more to the bottom, but they had uh, lightning bolts. I have a vi quick video that I did too. Uh, this one is like one of the cutest. It's Cinderella's Castle. I decided to put this one on a t-shirt and I just think it's absolutely adorable. Um, this is Comfort Colors. It's in a large, it's $12.99, but at Hobby Lobby, they have their t-shirts 30% off. So it's $9 and change. Um, this is the boxy short version of Comfort Colors, not on their website. You have to go in store. They have this turquoise minty color, turquoise teal. I don't know what you call it. Um, They had a purple, which I really liked. I should have gotten that one. A charcoal gray. Uh, I don't know if they had a white. They had a creamish yellow and they had a peach. The creamish yellow and the peach were the exact colors of my vitiligo, so it looked horrible. But if you guys have a different skin tone than me, they were really, 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 really pretty. They just would not look right on me. But I do recommend those colors. It's like a creamy yellowish, which I think would look cool with like if you had Daisy Duck or Donald Duck, if you were doing Disney. And then they had a really pretty peachish color too. But this is what I did. I will show you at the end of the video, but I ironed this on. I messed up a couple times, but I got this ironed on and then I just and it, it stuck to it. I ironed both sides. It stuck to it. I think it would have been really good. I'm going to hand wash this anyway, but I also sewed it. And I know you guys are going to say, oh, I don't know how to sew. I don't know how to sew either. And I'll show you proof. This is the inside of it. I just took white thread. Like I just had a button sewing kit and I just took white thread and tried my best to sew around the edge so it didn't come up. I'll probably still hand wash this anyway or do a really, really light cycle on it. I'm not one of those people who are anti hand washing. I actually think it's kind of easy. It's like a full on satisfaction. Like you drop in, I drop in like the gain fling. I get it all soapy. I spin it all around then I rinse it and hang it. And then I don't have to worry about it again. It's almost better than having to transfer it to the dryer, but that's just me. Um, this I get a large in and it fits me a little bit oversized and boxy. I could have done a medium, but again, I like it boxy and oversized. And this one is 100% cotton, so always keep that in mind. I do think the Comfort Colors shirts shrink the least amount of most cotton shirts, but I still think that you should size up. I didn't see more than a large, so I don't know if they're getting more in because it's a new item. I'm not really sure, but that's how it, it fit like a little oversized on me. Like this is a, oh, I wish I could show you guys. This is like just a boxy kind of shirt and it's just a short and it fits kind of just like this. So cute. But you could put anything on these. Like the charcoal gray one would look really cute with the Mickey Mouse patch because they have Mickey Mouse patch. Um, I just think it's so cute, so inexpensive. I think my total for all of them, including the patches, including the shirt, was over a little bit over $60, which would have been the price of one of the mini pouches. So highly recommend. You can do so much with it. Um, I'm going to hop off here, but I will add to the end what I did and how I messed up on some of the things. So if this is the only part you want to see and you got everything down pat, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. If you guys want to see how I get to this 
this these stickers these patches on here um go ahead and continue watching i'll put it right here at the end have a great day guys thank you the first pouch i made was the disney mini mouse pouch i use e6000 glue you want to be careful with the glue because it is very strong i took the little tape that's on the back of it the mini mouse bow and just wiped it off i took the e6000 and put it on the inside Leave room on the edge because you don't want the E6000 coming out on all of the edges. I did tap it and then I held it down with a book. It needs 24 hours to cure, but the maximum bond strength is 72 hours. So I know it's hard not to, to put this on your bag or put this in your bag and use it, but please try to give it the full 72 hours to cure. I also added paper to the inside so that it didn't crush down while I had the books on both sides. I put books on both sides just to make it stay as long as possible. And then instead of just like pushing down in the very beginning, I tapped it. I tapped the patch onto the plastic. That way it didn't move around and it stayed where I originally wanted it to be. And here is the finished product. Make sure you give it time though and don't put too much glue on it. Next up was a t-shirt. I grabbed the patch. I looked at the instructions in the back. I will put them up here in case you wanna screenshot them, but I did follow the instructions to a T on what I was going to do. There they are right there. I took the little sticky part off the back of the patch so the patch would adhere perfectly onto the t-shirt. I placed it where I wanted to. I eyeballed it, but you can measure it a little bit better than I did. And then it says to put a cloth in between the patch and the iron. So I put a towel there and I pushed down for 20 to 25 seconds at the cotton setting, which for mine, it was six. It did turn to seven, the linen one, because I didn't feel like it was working. I didn't feel like it was hot enough. And you will see here, the towel was just a little bit too thick. So when I peeled off the towel, the patch did not adhere whatsoever. It was still a loose patch. You can see here, nothing happened. So then I decided something thinner. I didn't have anything right there with me. So I just flipped over the sleeve of the shirt and that ended up working perfectly. So I suggest that if you do this, do something thinner like a sheet, something not a towel or a bulky blanket because then it will not go through. After I did that, I tr tracked all the edges and they were all down. Good job, Jessica, except for one on the little corner. It does say to turn the shirt inside out and iron it that way. I did that as well and it came out perfectly. I then did my little sewing thing, which I'm not good at, but I did that just for my purposes, just to feel better about it. For this pouch, I had the glam patch and it was very narrow, so I was very careful where I put the E6000. I just kind of copied over the glam, but not too close to the edge. And then you'll see as I'm doing this, I take the back of a pen that's flat and I kind of do circles and push the glue to the edge so that it doesn't come up, but it doesn't have so much glue that it pops out from underneath and you don't have glue all around the, pop, the pouch, if that makes sense. I also, before I do anything, I checked like 30 ways on how to do this, um, on where to put the patches. So finalize where you wanna put the patches before you even think about the glue sticking anything down. This is where I took the edge of the pen and I just kind of did circles around so that the glue was at the edge, but it wasn't big globs of glue. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm not a pro at this, but I've done it a few times and I've traveled with it and nothing has ever come up. E6000 is your friend and I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.